out you would be playing uh, the penguin. Well, I don't know. They just called me up and asked me to do it. So I was like, this is, wow. Okay, well, we're already into this great gender-bending moment, which, which should never be a big deal when it's organic. And when, I mean, I, I said this in the panel, the essence of the penguin is the essence of the penguin. It's outside of the, like, male, female, non-binary. It is the essence of the penguin. So it's like, you either want to jump on board with that and have the best time and create this really dastardly character, which I've got to say, arguably, the fact that they made her a mother is utterly terrifying, because she's a psychist. Um, so it was very exciting, and I thought, what if only, only JJ, Matt Reeves, and Bruce Tim could have come up with this as a concept or this expression? There's so many people have played this role, of course, before, in finding that voice and its characteristics, there's some have a squawk, some have a walk, this and that. Are you squawking? Are you, uh, you have certain, no, you know, how do you find your voice? No, okay. I found the voice, because I'll tell you what I did, I looked at a lot of those, a lot of Jimmy Cagney, a lot of, a lot of gangster movies from like the 40s and the 30s, and then my mother-in-law is actually from the Upper East Side of New York, and she has this very clipped, beautiful way of speaking. So I was thinking about that really formal American vintage way of speaking, and then made it bigger, and singing, the fact that she's a cabaret singer kind of helped with that as well, but that was really the inspiration, um, that noir um, vintage American. There's a gender question in your role, I mean, have you been, I don't know, insecure or worried about people who feel like a female voice, or how you manage this gender thing? Uh, I mean... I manage the gender thing by, you know, I'm, I, I'm a woman. I identify as a woman. Um, uh, I don't know. Like, like I said before, I don't. It never really struck me. Like, it, the, 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 the gender idea is just. Um, I think as we're seeing, it's just becoming so much more fluid. Like the idea of what is supposed to be male and what is su supposed to be female. We're, we're through the looking glass on that. So I think. Having the opportunity to, to explore that in a really robust, interesting way, I was stoked. I was so excited for it to be. I mean, and I, you can't ever worry about what anybody thinks. Like I think if you've given your whole heart, when you're full of integrity, and it's something that you love, people are always going to have their opinion. They're always going to not like it, or they're going to really like it. But to not like something based on its gender, I'll, you know, I'll. I'll debate that all day with anybody, but, you know, yeah. What was it like behind the booth, day one, you're in there filming and recording, what was it like? I mean, look, it's, it's quite, I like a high degree of difficulty, I've been doing this for 30 years, I don't like things that are easy, it's boring, I like things that are challenging and, and interesting and working with really exceptionally talented people, so, you're always really, I was nervous the night before and the day of, but you go in there with all of your ideas and um, and then you've always got to be willing to be told that, yeah, that's not working, let's try something else. To never take it personally, to keep, to keep working on it. And again, these were super creative people that I felt really, I felt lucky to have been invited into that space and I felt they were lucky to have me too. Like, you know, because you, you want people who are enthusiastic and available and wanting to try lots of different things. It was exciting um, and a bit scary. <laughs> what do you find the most challenging thing about voice acting compared to what I've been doing? Well, it's interesting when you don't have to match a voice glam. So, so for example, Princess Mononoke was extraordinarily challenging because not only was the voice flat, it was in a different language. So we were also observing that there really couldn't be any movement away from the script as was. In Tarzan, they animated to, there was a huge amount of improv. Like the entire scene where she's describing flying through the jungle with, the, with Tarzan was, they animated it to, the, to my voice. So it's always... It's always, it's always a bit different. This, um, this was very specific, and I did see a couple of line drawing animations, which were really beautiful. It was such a great set.
sense of sort of the size and breadth of something. Does that answer your question? So there is, we are living nowadays like a, a bit of yeah, an epidemic of lack of attention. It's so difficult to, to keep with the series, with the animated series, and watching without the sound one. And as you know very well the story, I would like to ask you what do you believe, which aspect of this new series can catch the audience? What do you think they will focus them on the, on the screen of this film? I mean, I think that there's this amazing... That it's a film noir, you know, that this is like this amazing, stark, um, dark vintage look to these, to these, I was going to say movies, because they feel like movies to me, these episodes. They have that, um, they have a weight, and there's no, there's no gadgets, there's just this, we're in the 1940s, right? So it's a different vibe, it's a lot more to do with like the characters and the way that it's drawn and like the fight scenes are, are very sort of different and I think a bit more inspired because they're not relying on gadgets. From so what you've seen of the series, is there a particular scene that you're particularly happy with or, you're, or you were surprised by? You know, I love the um, I love the fight scene that I have with Batman on the iceberg. I think it's fantastic. I love the fact, I mean love. The fact that they, it works, she, she does blow up the police station, like it's not like he actually stops her, really. I mean, everyone in, on her team is dead, but like that's the sacrifice. Like it's, it's pretty great right off the bat, you're like, <laughs> but they're willing to like kill everyone and destroy, all right. There's, there is some great villain killing and the play thing, it's pretty, it's pretty intense. I was very glad to be first episode, because then I feel like, okay, I've done my thing and now all the others kind of, it was great, amazing. Well, she pretty much, like, from the very beginning when she killed her son, <laughs> right, imagine? right right out right the gate, the you're like, well, she's useless. The penguins, no one's ever, no penguin, right. I, none of them, and I love them all, but no one has done anything as terrible as that. It is awful, it's Shakespearean and how awful. And made them hit themselves against each other, and then put the fear in the other one who's alive. Like, she's what do a I do? She's a total psychopath. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, she really is. Like, doesn't really come close. Like, I think. I mean, maybe in terms of like the frightening promise. Maybe the Joker is the only like when I think of Heath Ledger's version. And I'm, you know, really, it was really like this is unpredictable, and I believe that they really could do it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.